Well, often in these machine problems, there's a two-force member. And identifying that two-force member can be very helpful uh, in our solution and understanding how to quickly get to the solution. For example, here is this clamping mechanism here. You're pushing down on here. There's a two-force member that's right there. And what happens when you push down here, this two-force member becomes a compression member, which just pushes up. This causes a force this way on B. And now this part of the mechanism rotates about A because of that BX. When it rotates about there, uh, about A, then it puts a, a response there, or, or uh, the clamping force at E can be determined. This pruner, little cutter here, has a two-force member here. When you squeeze this together, it puts that in compression. It allows this part here to rotate about that point, about B, putting some force, cutting force at A. We're going to talk about this one in a little bit, but this one has a two-force member that's pushing up. This one here has a two-force member right here. And when this is clamped together, this goes into compression. And just a couple things to remember is that this one will have a C. Uh, I mean, it'll have a, um, it'll be in compression. So C, D will be going up like that. There'll be two components. There'll be a C, Y, which will be proportional to two. And a C, X, which is proportional to 0.75. So just remember our ratios and the rules. We just talked about that in the prior video. So, um, you know, that can help you in your analysis on how to go about solving these problems. Then here we have a bolt cutter. Uh, this is going to be the two force member there, which allows us to cut a bolt right there. All right, let's go ahead and solve this problem. Uh, see what we can come up with on that. So let's just go through this. All right, so 6102, I have a force of 350 newtons being applied at the handle here. It is pushing this down, which puts this in compression, like I said. That causes this to go this way and causes this member here to rotate about that fixed support D, or that, uh, not fixed support, but that pin D. So if I can in the end, it's kind of helpful to plan your uh, plan your attack here. Understanding how this part works is helpful for us to understand how to approach this part or how to get there. So the end is finding out how that part works, how the clamp actually works. And then you can say, ah, oh, it rotates about that pin D. So all I need is a CX. If I find CX, then I can make that go. All right, so let's draw some forces. I draw, I've drawn a free body diagram over here. I've drawn some, or let's draw the forces on here, and I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so we can uh, see how to approach this. First of all is the two force member BE. This is a 30 degree angle right there, which is the same as, you, know, you can't really see it over here, this 30 degree angle. So there are two components of BE, so I'll go ahead and put them in here. There will be BE, cos 30, and BE sine 30. All right, P over here, I think I relabeled P, I'm going to call it, or that force F, I'm going to call it P is equal to 350 newtons. And it has two components in the X and Y, so I'll go ahead and put those in here. Uh, let's see, I'll put that there, P, this is a 60 degree angle, if that's a 30 degree down here, that's a 60 degree there, so I'll call this P cos 60, and then this force coming down will be P sine 60. Then the lever arms, alright, so I have this lever arm, this is 275, and then this is cos 30 on this side, so this is 275 sine 30, sorry, sine 30, then inside here will be 275 cos 30. Then the only other one that I've got over here is, it's not shown on this picture or doesn't see, you can't see it on this picture, but this is a 30 
uh, millimeter gap right there. All right, now that I've got those forces drawn, let's try to figure out how I can solve something. Like I said in the, on the, just previously, uh, finding the force in the two force member is often pretty helpful. So let's try to do that. If I rotate, or uh, if I sum the moments about C, then I have all of these components and their lever arms already identified we might be able to solve for BE in one equation. So let's see if we can do that. Let's try summing the moments about C. All right, so let's see what I got. BE cos 30, and it's got a lever arm of 70, and that is going in the positive direction. Here's my cos, here's the 70. Then I have minus BE sine 30, and its lever arm is 30. And where's that? Here's BE, here's my 30 right there, and it's trying to go in this direction, which is negative. All right, let's move to the pushing force over here. Let's have minus P cos 60, its lever arm is 275 sine 30. Then the other one is minus P sine 60, and its lever arm is 275 cos 30 plus 70. And that's all equal to zero. Now I'll let you walk through this and make sure that you understand all those lever arms and whatever else we got. But if P is equal to 350 newtons, I can solve for BE with this one equation. So I just found BE is equal to 2573 newtons. And that is a key part of the answer. Once I find BE, what I'm really looking for, whoops, I forgot to draw the CX and CY on my picture. So let's go back to that. That was key important or important, I forgot about that. Let's do CX and CY. All right, now that I have all of my X forces defined, now I've got CX labeled in the picture, I can sum the forces in the X direction and find out something. So I'll sum of the forces in the X is equal to zero. So I've got CX minus BE sine 30 plus P cos 60 is equal to zero. And here I can now solve for CX. And that is basically getting very close to what I need to get my clamping force. All right. Now that I have CX defined from this free body diagram, let's move to this free body diagram. What I want to do is transfer those forces equal opposite to point C right here. So if I have CX going to the right up there, I have CX going this way. CY has to be going this way. D, I don't know the directions, so I'm just going to put them in here, DX. Then the clamping force over here at A. That's really what our unknown is. Now it's pretty easy to see. Because CY goes through D, if I know CX and this lever arm right here, I should be able to find AY. So CX has this lever arm, which is 60. AY has this lever arm, which is 235. So just summing the moments about the point of rotation, which is point D here, sum of the moments about D is equal to zero. So I have CX times 60 minus AY times 235 equals zero. And I got AY, which is now the unknown clamping force, is equal to 2. 83.8 newtons. All right, so there's the clamping force. That's what we were looking for. The mechanical advantage. What is the mechanical advantage here? Well, in this case, it is not very well, not very good. Mechanical advantage is the out over the in, which is going to be 283 over 350. So it is less than one, which is kind of bad, unless you needed it that way for some reason, I don't know what. 
but how can we improve the mechanical advantage here? Clearly, the main lever arm here of 235 is what's causing this whole mechanism to be fairly inefficient. If this lever arm was much shorter, instead of 235, maybe 50 millimeters, you could boost this output by a lot, and then you'd have a very good mechanical advantage. So depending on what you're trying to do with your mechanism, obviously uh, uh, if it was needed for its application to be this long, but if you're looking for um, looking for greater force then you could you could start by either making this lever arm longer in other words giving better um, better advantage on this side or making this lever arm shorter and then you can get uh, a lot of advantage on that side